Good morning. Welcome again to TELET's IoT Innovation. I'm Jason Hallstrom. I'm with Florida Atlantic University. I have the privilege of directing the Institute for Sensing and Embedded Network Systems Engineering. This is iSense. TELET has been a fantastic partner for FAU. They continue to be a fantastic partner for FAU. And so it's really a, a great privilege and a treat to have a chance to spend some time talking with you today about the work that TELET and FAU have been doing over the, the past couple of years. And I have to say, the introduction was so nice, Fred. Um, Fred has seen me speak a number of times before. And despite how some of those events have gone, he invited me back again this year. So, so if that's not a great partner, I don't know what it is. So, so many thanks to, to Fred and the TELET team. It's always exciting to be at an event filled with so many people who are excited about the potential of IoT, who are excited about the future of a deeply connected world, who are excited about the transformative impact that it can have. At FAU, we share your enthusiasm. We are excited about IoT. We believe in IoT. We believe in the transformative potential that it has. We believe so strongly in the future of IoT that we're betting our institution's future on it. IoT, and more broadly, sensing and smart systems, is central to FAU's long-term strategic plan of becoming the nation's next great research university. Over the next 10 years, we're going to continue to invest in people. We're going to continue to invest in infrastructure. We're going to continue to invest in our students, continue to invest in programs to build the IoT ecosystem in South Florida across academia, industry, and government. In 2015, iSense was initiated to help coordinate that long-term growth strategy over the next 10 years. And at FAU, we serve two functions. First, we serve as a clearinghouse for sensing, communication, and computing technology for IoT. Second, we serve as a catalyst for interdisciplinary collaboration, for bringing teams together across colleges, across campuses, across academia, industry, and government to focus on the grand challenge problems, to tackle the hard problems that are so broad in scope, so grand in scale, that they're never going to be solved by an individual discipline alone. They're never going to be solved by academics working in a silo. I'm talking about problems like ensuring our water, food, and energy security, about monitoring our aging transportation infrastructure, about helping our growing aging population remain healthy and independent longer. These are the challenges that we're tackling at FAU with partnership from TELET. So we're organized into three program areas. We have a program area in infrastructure systems. We have a program area in marine and environment. And we have a program area in health and behavior. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about some real IoT applications that we fielded in each of these areas with TELET. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. I normally, at this point in the conversation, I spend some time talking about the future of IoT. But last night, I, I removed that portion of the deck because it, it doesn't make any sense to talk about what could be, what if, what then, what later, because the future of IoT is here today. The future of IoT is now. There is tremendous enthusiasm across academia, industry, and government that has been driving rapid technological advancements in technology that makes it easier and easier to build IoT apps. It has never been easier to build IoT applications than it is today. So if we look at just the past few years, we have seen a wave of new technology, new devices, new chipsets, new hardware platforms designed to make it easier to connect things. That was followed by a wave of software platforms, APIs, libraries, tool sets, IoT enablement platforms, designed to connect those things into networks of things and to make sense of the data that they produce. Well, great hardware, great software results in great applications. And we've seen a host of new applications that have the potential to cross-cut sectors, to cross-cut industries, to revolutionize markets. So if you hear people talking about the future of IoT, Keep in mind that the future of IoT is now. This is the time. So the first application that I want to spend some time talking about is focused on infrastructure systems management, specifically on stormwater monitoring. 
And I, and I like this application because I think it tells an interesting and, and perhaps surprising story about how IoT can be used in municipalities to streamline, streamline operations, to monitor ROI. I think it's an exciting application. So the picture that you see up on the screen, this is a picture of Aiken, South Carolina. Aiken is in West Central South Carolina, and it's a historic city. And like many historic cities, it's, it's kind of grown organically over time without a lot of pre-planning, without a lot of city planning. And the infrastructure below that city, the stormwater infrastructure, has likewise grown organically over time. And it's resulted in a scenario where there's a very large catch basin that is across the whole of the city that empties out into two 10-foot diameter pipes, which happen to be in the directly adjacent Hitchcock Woods. Now, if you spend some time talking with folks who've lived in Aiken long enough, they'll tell you stories about what it was like to grow up in Aiken and to play in Hitchcock Woods and to spend time walking back and forth across this little meandering stream that made its way through this urban forest. Well, today, in the course of less than one generation, that little stream, Sand River, has become a canyon. That canyon is 70 foot deep, it's 30 foot wide, it's carved entirely out of stormwater. Aiken is a very forward-thinking city. And they looked at this problem and they said, well, this is impacting one of the country's largest urban forests. It's affecting drinking water because the wetlands are being covered in sediment and they're losing their capacity to treat the stormwater before it ultimately becomes drinking water in the savanna. So the city wanted to invest in best management practices for stormwater, focusing on green infrastructure practices. So these are things like cisterns and bioswales and curb cuts and porous pavement. If you don't know anything about those, that's okay. They're all designed to do the same thing. Keep the water in the soil. The problem, of course, is that to retrofit stormwater infrastructure is incredibly expensive. And the city needs excellent tools to be able to determine what is the return on their investment for installing these BMPs where should they install the BMPs? And what is the long-term impact, not only on water quantity out of the outflows, but what is the impact on water quality so they can optimize over time? We worked with the city to build an IoT application that provides a full water balance for the city. So this infrastructure that we put together provides a full water balance. It's a collection of sensors networked through 433 megahertz radios, low power, 900 megahertz radios, low power, cellular, Wi-Fi, a host of technologies, so that we can capture the amount of precipitation that occurs, the amount of precipitation 